Okay. So, yeah, we can start with the meeting. Uh, first item on the agenda is review of blockers for shared release. Uh, do you know who added this item? Is there any specific blocker that we want to discuss or in general we have to go and review all of them again? Um, if I, I think I added this. Um, okay. I just wanted to make sure that is there anything that uh, is stopping someone um, or that or that we we think might be hold, holding up the release? I mean, we did do the bug scrub, so if we think that it can wait until a week or two, that's fine too. Um, yeah, I think I... So, uh, I don't know about blockers, but I got the nightly builds that broke last night. They don't seem to have been working, at least the physical ones. I don't know. That, to me, would be a blocker until we understand the fact they haven't built for the past three nights. So until the nightly builds are clean, I would expect we have a blocker somewhere. Could you point, um, could you link to that, David? There is that, which, which pod is that? Uh, I've got the nightly build QCT1 master that failed. All the QCT1, cord two, cord three, and master seem to have failed, as well as the Calyx cord pod one failed. Uh, yeah, the QCT pod is failing. So uh, Luca and I, so we pinned the QCT people, and uh, uh, we are going to take a deeper look at that today. So uh, in, in we, we really need a better mechanism. I mean, I, I don't check it every day myself, but there needs to be some, uh, I guess we had emails, I don't know, but a build should not have been broken for four days, I guess. Or is, least, would it, would, least, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I was just trying to propose one idea, like uh, it would not help us debug, but at least it would give us a heads up. Uh, can we um, add the, notifications whenever for the CIAB and the pod jobs to directly point to the QA Jenkins, like for every night if there is a failure, to just report There's it on the Jenkins. I mean, sorry, on the Slack channel, sorry, on the Slack, QA Slack. It, it can be done because I know we do that internally and it's also done for Volta. Yeah, I saw um, Volta. So I don't know, I, it can be done. I can't do it obviously, but, um. Someone can. <laughs> okay. I, I agree. I think that's a good idea. Um, one of the other things is for two of those days, at least, the build was broken due to mass not working um, and that, that bug. So hopefully that isn't, hopefully it isn't, uh, that isn't related, but. Um, yeah, it could be something else, but at least it gives us a heads up that something is wrong. And then we can get on to it. Yeah. So, so I mean, in terms of blockers, I don't know about specific Jira bugs blocking, but until those are, until we're getting clean builds, I, I think we're blocked. Yeah, that's true. And then for your, for your information, David, like if you see on the open core Jira, we have like a, a bug sprint, SD bug sprint, and then we yep. did a bugs, a bug scrub meeting, and then we identified. Uh, the critical uh, and the blocker issues that we want them to be fixed as part of the shared dilution and and these the list. Yes. Okay. So I mean, you can just look at them and yeah, I I agree for sure that uh, not parts not being built is definitely a showstopper. Okay. Looking, looking specifically at your at those errors, David. Um, it looks like the problem is the core dev machine doesn't come up on the Jenkins box, so it looks like something internal to the Jenkins box, not anything with the build. With it doesn't even get to the point of launching the build. So yeah, I mean that, that's good, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and it does look like the cord in a box builds have been succeeding since. Zach, you fixed that mass issue. So, yeah. yeah, we definitely should fix the the physical pod build, but I don't have the feeling that the build itself is broken. I think it's something wrong with the Jenkins job. I, I agree, but 
I, I again, not that I necessarily have a vote. I vote we we hold off until we verify that. But I I, I agree with your assessment. So is there any specific bug that we want to talk about it from the bug scrub, uh, from, sorry, from this bug sprint, uh, Zach, or are, you, are we fine? Or maybe next? I think we're okay. Uh -huh. I, I think we're okay. Let's, let's move on. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, just, I just wanted to mention that um, I am still in the process of creating the release branch. It turned out to be a lot more work because of issues surrounding um, the Onos apps now being released separately, and it wasn't straightforward to uh, to do this with the current um, release Jenkins job, release build Jenkins job that we have. So I have been uh, doing work, moving things around into different repositories, and and fixing things that that broke. Uh, in order to get to the point that we could actually create the release job. Um, so uh, I'm hoping to get that finished very soon and, and create the release branch. Um, but un until that happens, we're, we're still in the point where we need to um, not check in new features onto the, um, the master branch. Okay. And Andy, one more question for you. Um, is the new build system, the code already merged or are we still waiting? Um, the, the, it's merged. The new build system is in place. We're still waiting on uh, Gopi's changes um, for the physical pod to get merged. Um, it's not clear, uh, it's not 100% clear to me uh, what the status of the um, physical pod and cord in a box builds is going to be for, um, for the release. So the changes that I've been making in order to create the release branch also affect um, the, the way um, that, that the Onos apps are actually loaded onto the, the pod. Well, it, it's a long story, but the, the I think Cord in a Box and the, the physical pod builds using the new build system are currently in jeopardy for the, uh, the 4.0 release. Oh, okay. And uh, do we already have a procedure, Andy, that we can look at? And then do you recommend us to at least start with some kind of test? Or do we do you think that we should still wait on that? So I have a cord in a box um, documentation update patch sitting in Garrett right now. And so as soon as that gets reviewed and uh, merged, then I'll ping you and um, you can you can see if that documentation uh, maybe maybe follow it and see if you can bring up a cord in a box using that. Okay, sure, sounds good, Andy. Thanks. Thanks. So okay, moving on to the next item, um, autonomic software defined collector for cord and peripherals. So, not uh, can anybody call for this item? None of us from here. Uh, I'm just thinking it might be from Tom. Um, if not, anybody from here, any inputs on this, then I can uh, add this item for the next agenda and then ask uh, Tom to give us more uh, insight to it. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, virtual pod E2E test specific to E-Core and M-Core. Zach, is this yours? Yes, this is mine. Um, so one of the things we ran into in the China mobile deploy was that uh, there was a lot of stuff that didn't, um, that, that probably would have been found if we had some greater testing of E-Core and M-Core's work. Um, 
basically uh, we had issues where either the pod didn't uh, parts of the code, their code base didn't build or they didn't have, um, th there wasn't really testing of it uh, in a virtual setting. It's it, most of their testing, I think was happening on physical hardware. And that's, while well, that's great. Um, yeah, a lot of the time that means that there's a lot of manual work that went into doing it. And the advantage of having some sort of virtual test is that we can run it in Jenkins and on a, and it is abstracted from their manual fiddling um, that maybe got that to work. It forces that to end up being in the repo and, and being automated. Um, so uh, I, I'd like to get to the point where we're doing uh, at least builds um, and we can have so the E cord and M cord builds can fail, uh, which will be a good thing because then we'll know when, when other changes are made that break those builds. Um, I have more knowledge of the E cord uh, scenario because that's what we deployed in China. Um, so Ecord has some unusual differences. They have both a global and a local um, deploy. Um, the global is very similar to um, uh, currently in the new build system, something called the single deploy, which is a single head node with uh, Onus attached to it um, and no open stack. Um, that that I think we could um, get a test going for pretty easily, um, and then the, their local scenario is very similar to the Arcor pod, um, but the, none of those really do integration. And to do a full integration of Ecord, you need to have two local pods and a global pod. Mm -hmm. So that sounds like it will be a lot of work. So I, I'm thinking the low hanging fruit here is we do uh, we we run um, the uh, uh, we set up jobs to run builds that just um, build the pod and maybe don't do any testing and then we add more testing as as it goes along um and if we see things that fail on just the build that will be uh, i think a good step towards uh, having a uh, having a system that is a little more trustworthy um does that make sense yeah i i think on the same lines even mark had talked to me about this yesterday and mm -hmm. uh, uh, to get yeah definitely we could start something going uh, like starting with jenkins and then just build using the manual steps right now you whatever you have and i and uh, please correct me if i'm not wrong uh, you do not have any automated procedure for e cord yet right no yeah. but it i think we can get there pretty quick um they have a lot of things that are in 3.0 that need to be brought to 4.0. And so once that happens, um, the new build system is set up so that it's pretty easy to switch to use the eCord um, scenario okay. in, or in pod config. Okay. So I, I think we can I think we can get there pretty quickly, um, especially because I, Andy has um, the uh, the uh, virtual uh, R cord in a box. Um, going already and so it's just a matter of switching that over so i guess this is a matter of making some jobs and then making sure that eCard has all their stuff in order to um to build okay i understand so is it okay if we schedule a meeting for next week because mark and i thought that we would meet and then uh, since you also started this item maybe we all can uh, talk about it next week and that sounds good Okay, and we get more details, and then we can start a job, uh, get done. So I'm I'm not sure what the M cord, how M cord in, integrates with this, but it, I, I'm assuming they're going to need the same soon enough. Um, maybe we should also engage with um, them, probably post up MWC. Okay, so M cord would be ping ping, right, or anybody else? Yeah, I I think so. Um, maybe maybe we ask ping ping, and then she uh, tells us what. Uh, who to talk to and who to engage for that. Okay, so maybe we can first start with e -Core for next week. And then, yeah, as you said, like after MWC, we can start with m -Core. Okay, sounds good. All right, okay, thanks, Zach. Anything else to add in this one? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, um, there's another, uh, so I'm moving on to the last one. Can we work with Netronome to implement sample loop O collector on smart NICs? Okay, I somehow feel that this might be related to this code and the peripherals and the dynamic collectors. 
left. So if not anybody from this call, then I can um, uh, circle back with uh, Tom on this and then get it added to the next meeting. Okay. Any other items that we want to discuss other than these items on this agenda? Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. And we'll meet again um, two weeks from now. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks. See you guys.